Well, we're getting ready for our next project. We're going to restore some vintage Delta Rockwell machinery. I've got a jointer here. I've got a tilting arbor saw. These were part of a package deal that I picked up probably two years ago thereabouts. There were four machines in total. Uh, it was a bandsaw, the jointer, table saw, and a lathe. The lathe I've already restored. There's another separate video on that, so if you can check that out. But now I'm going to finally gotten around to working on these. The tilting arbor saw here is upside down because that's kind of the way I transported it in my trailer so it wouldn't slide around all over the place. And I've already taken it off of the stand. So the stand's in great shape. We'll clean that up and probably put a fresh coat of paint on it. And this thing here has the switch is over here. Normally these things have the switch right there, but this one's been adapted. The motor for it is right here. And again, it is also a 220, 110, 220 that's switchable, so you can change it to whatever. I think right now it's set up for a, uh, 115 if I'm not mistaken and it's got all the bars the guide bars standard the old style fence here it's missing there's a little adjuster right here that so we'll have to figure that out first order of business here is going to be to take this entire section off of the table four bolts here to hold the cabinet part four bolts to hold the trunnion and the Well, you see we're going to have some work to do on the table here as well as the wings that were on there so we'll require some elbow grease to get these back to normal and here is the serial number DR8888 and the model number is 34-400 so we'll check and see this what this, the date is on the serial number but I'm going to guess it's probably in the 60s Okay, we've made some progress getting that trunnion out of there. Some of the pieces, this is the piece in the back where the motor mounts to. Swivels right on here. And here's the, one of the trunnion pieces. There's the motor mount. That motor mount, by the way, is bent a little bit. You can kind of see right there. So that's going to need to be fixed a little bit. I think we can probably heat that and correct that. The bevel gear here, so you want to make sure we've got that nice and clean. As I take this stuff apart, I kind of adopted a habit to just mark these, put all the bolts in various and sundry little baggies so I can keep track of where they belong and whatnot. It's easier to go back, get everything back together. There's a key right here that goes on that shaft that holds that pulley on there. So I, so I use my jaw puller to pull it off of there. I probably could have knocked it off because it wasn't on very tight, but you really don't know that when you're first getting into these things. You don't want to start beating on this stuff. There's another nut right in there. We got to take that out and we're going to take this whole thing out and check the bearings and everything that's in there. Got that nut off of there, but it was on pretty good because these are very fine threads and they were probably just filled up with junk and what have you. So I had to go to my half inch air wrench to get that off of there. Now we can, I, I can, I can tell that there's something in there that feels just a little weird. I did that. It did, it's got a little bit of a, I don't know if that's the bearing or what, but we're going to check that out. You see on this shaft right there, there's a little retainer ring. It's got some indentations right there. We can bump it with a little chisel. It wasn't in there tight. I think what that does, that just keeps the bearing seated in there properly. So now we should be able to knock that shaft out the other way and take a look at these bearings. Okay, we've got this arbor shaft pushed out. These bearings, I was able to do that. 
because I didn't I don't have a press but I was able to put my jaw puller right on here my I used just used two jaws on it and put it right over on the edges of this casting top and bottom and then pushed in the middle if that pushed it on out so okay this bearing here sat down in this recess right there and I was able to reach through the other side here with this punch and gently tap at the edges of it and knock it out. It wasn't in there too awfully tight. And then this one on the on the arbor side here was down right here in this this area right here. It didn't have a press but I was able to get my pry bar in there just enough to start working around it and by golly I was able to slide it off of there. So now we've got to hunt, hunt down some bearings. All right, we've got our trunnion fully disassembled here. And I've decided that I'm not going to take this pin out. I'm just soaking it real good with some PB blaster. And it's pretty free to move around. So I think I'm just going to leave it at that. Did a little work on the motor here. I took off all of that cord. I don't know why they put 40 feet of cord on this thing. But about 10 feet of it had a whole bunch of nicks in it and straighten this up. I don't, uh, earlier you might have seen it was bent so the starter thing wouldn't fit. We got that done. I don't know if the motor works. Give that the smoke test probably tomorrow. Then we've got to just start cleaning everything up. The next big job is going to be cleaning and surfacing these, the table and the wings here. Got the bearings out. These are MRC 203 SFF. So we're going to find a couple bearings. Biggest chore is going to be getting this table and the wings back to a decent condition. I think there, there's nothing deep on them. It's just rust and surface crap. So we could, we're gonna be able to take that off all right. So take all these legs off. We'll have to, we've got a little bit of rust. We'll knock that out. Clean up all the machine surfaces on the trunnion parts. And then uh, give everything a good degreasing. And then probably do a little bit of acetone before we're ready to give everything a coat. But we're a ways away from that. But before we get into that, Got the motor out here. I put a little bit of a pigtail. I happen to have a plug. I don't know if you can see that there. So what we're going to do, we're going to see if this damn thing works. Got an extension cord here. Let's plug it in here first. Move it back off the table a little bit. Woohoo! That's always good when you got a motor that works. That makes life a little bit better. Horse and a half motors. I think it's the original motor because that came with us. So anyway, that's great. Glad that works. We're gonna clean this up a little bit, probably give it a little coat of paint to freshen it up, match, make it match everything else. But that's down the road a little ways. Gotta move on to getting this stuff cleaned up. I'm using my angle grinder with a wire cup on it to get the first pass of this heavy rust off, and it's working real well. Right here, I've already done a little spot with some kerosene and some uh, 400 grit wet and dry sandpaper and it's coming uh, it's cleaning this up real, real nice so we just got to keep at it so we're going to go ahead finish this up get the wings and then we'll do a little more uh, elbow grease with the kerosene and some wet and dry sandpaper right here we got some paint it looks like we got down there at one point in time from right about the spot right here and right here, and that's coming off a little, a little tougher. Well, we got all the heavy rust off of here, and I can see there's some pitting in the grooves here. I took off my cup and just put on a straight wire wheel to get down in these grooves, and they cleaned them out pretty well. There's a couple of spots on this table where it's pitted. One pitted pretty bad right here in this, right here in this miter slot. This one seems to be okay, and there's a gouge right here or something got put on the top of this table or something like that but I think it's going to clean up real well. We've got to straighten this thing out. As you can see it got bent there. <clears throat> I'll heat that up see what I can do to straighten it out. Straighten that little ear right, right here, right here. Oh, 
Okay, we're gonna call that good, I think. Okay, I've got everything all cleaned up, and I've got these machine surfaces taped over with some masking tape, and I've got a few spots that I need to prime, and then we'll, where I've got bare metal, I'll hit it with a little bit of primer. Okay, we've got most of the parts painted, and I've got the table reassembled. Did a little touch-up painting here after I got it back together. I, these little ends right here weren't painted properly, so I just covered up the bolt heads with a little uh, masking tape so I can paint those up. Next thing we've got to do is I've got to get the, the uh, table cleaned up and the bottom. I haven't even cleaned the bottom of it yet, so I need to get all that blown out of there. And then we'll mask that off and paint that and the table extensions. And then we'll be ready to put this bad boy back together. Okay, we're getting ready to start assembling this thing. First thing I gotta do is put these arbor, new arbor bearings back in. We'll put this one down here first. And it presses right in there. Now, this is my little handy dandy homemade press that I made. So we're gonna use that. And I'll show you how that thing works. That piece down there, like that, press against that the bottom part of this casting. Put that on there like that. And a nut there. Oh yeah. Runs right down in there. Perfect. Put that socket right on the outer race there. Now you can feel when they're right there hit the bottom. Right down there, seated right on the bottom. So that's good. Now we've got to put this one in. We'll check over on this side to make sure. Yep, that's bottomed out. So we're good to go there. This is that little retainer that goes in there like that. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put blue Loctite on there. That should do it. Put a little film of grease on this arbor because there's two shoulders on this arbor where those bearings ride. This goes in pretty easy. I, did, I thought I was going to have to press it. Actually, I did press it to get it out of there. Nut goes down there. So now we're going to take it over and start assembling it on the bottom of the table. Okay, I've got this table laid upside down. This is the front end of it. And so I'm going to start laying these trunnions in here. This is the bevel gear right here, and there's a little worm that rides in there, and it bolts to this to this main casting. So we just got that bolted up. All right, we've got the raising and lowering worm gear in there, and I'll be honest with you, it was a little bit difficult. I didn't realize there's a washer that goes right in there, and I didn't have that in there, and I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working properly. And so I had to take this. There's a roll pin that this I'll show you the the other one. These wheels are the same, and you'll see that slot right there. This is for the bevel side, but the razor, there's this roll pin that rides in that slot in here. Let me give you a little update here. Unfortunately, my camera ran out as I was putting a lot of this stuff together. And I'll be honest with you, it took me a little longer than I thought it would to get all of this in here the way it goes. I didn't take good notes when I took it apart. The diagram I have is actually for a different machine, so there was some slight differences, but I think I've got it all in here. This, the raising mechanism works great now, and the beveling mechanism works fine. Okay, while we're waiting for some paint to dry, I thought we'd go ahead and do the, get the electricals ready to go here. And what, we, what I've got, this is the old box. This is the uh, cutler hammer switch. 
This is the old cord out of that. There were, I think as I mentioned earlier in the video, there, were about, there was about 40 feet of this. Unfortunately, a whole bunch of it had been nicked up. So I've probably got, I don't know how much I've got here, 20 feet, I guess. So I'm gonna use that. I've gotta make a, uh, the electrical coming in from the plug and then another short coming out of the switch and going to the motor. So we're gonna take care of that. Picked up a new set of uh, channel lock crimpers here the other day and these things are pretty darn nice. This switch doesn't have a ground on it so I'm just gonna ground it to a lug on the, on the box here. Got my wheels on there that I've painted. So those look all right. And now we're gonna put the electrical switch right in here. We've got that all ready to go. I put the ground wire, I just bolted it right through the, I ground some off here so it's got a good ground right there. And we're ready to put that in. Okay, we've got our electrical in. Got the wires routed around there. And I put some cable ties on them to kind of keep them together. One of those is gonna go to the motor and the other one will go to the, uh, the power. Got our wheels on. I'm sure we'll need to do a little more adjustment once I get it upright and a blade on it and start actually trying to make sure everything's working properly. The next thing we've got to do, since I'm here by myself, I've got this set up and I got that stand oriented right. Now I'm going to try to flip that over and land it onto that and I've got a little carpet pad there so I don't scratch up my paint so stay tuned for that. Let's see how we can do. Okay, got that on there. Now I've got to figure out how to get it oriented to the holes properly. So the next thing we'll do is we'll put the motor bracket on. Okay, we've got the motor on, got the guide bars on, and got the, the belt here. Got that lined up. Took me a few minutes to kind of make sure I got that lined up real well with the pulley, but we've got that. Got the switch there. That all works good. So let's, uh, let's fire this thing up and see what happens. There we go, that sounds pretty good. I think I'm going to go ahead and put the blade on it and see what it does with a little piece of wood. This is the blade that was on it when I got it, so I'm sure it's probably jacked up a little bit, but we'll see what it's like here. We've got a piece of tuba six. Let's give it a whirl. put together, put the fence back together and the locking mechanism on the fence. So those are the next steps that will call us around. Let's see, I'm going to see if this thing will pass the nickel test like a Unisaw should. We've got four nickels sitting there, three of them are on the main table, and that one right the nearest to the camera is on the wing. And I'm not sure this is going to work because this thing is sitting on some dollies, so it's probably not as stable as it would be if it were sitting on flat on the floor. But we're going to give it a whirl here and see what happens. If we're not sitting steady on the concrete or solidly on the concrete, I think that's a pretty good result of the old nickel test. So, pretty pleased with that. Okay, we're, I think we've got everything pretty well done here. Got the Rip fence put back together. I had to uh, I had to rebuild a little piece in here, and I forgot to video that. There's a little rubber bushing that goes right through here that holds this into which this pin goes across here for this little cam that locks it. And that bushing was wore out, so I replaced it with a nylon bushing that went in there, and I put some nylon washers on either side of it. The other thing I've realized as I got, as I put these guide bars on, is this one had been, got bent somewhere. And it was pretty slight bend, but it had a little dimple on the back where it got bumped or something like that. So I was able to heat it 
and straighten it out but I still had to do a little uh, with a flap disc get that little dimple out so the the uh, so the guide rail guide bar <coughs> so the rip fence would slide across it so we got that fixed and I think this is uh, getting close to being a wrap By golly, I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out. This thing was kind of a mess when I picked it up. And a little elbow grease and, and some time. We got it right back. I won't say it's back to new condition because the table's a little messed up. But other than that, I mean, the table's not messed up. It's just, you can tell it's been used. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it's helpful for some of you guys out there that are doing one of these rebuilds. If you have any comments, put them in the uh, comments section. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like, share the video with anybody, any folks you know that are restoring some old Delta Rockwell machinery. And if you have questions, a lot of guys have asked me some questions through the comments about bearings that I've used and whatever. So don't hesitate to do that. Anyway.